So the elite school and elite school is not a new definition. It's a, it's a tradition, it's a custom. It's something that it's within public opinion. But it has several, it has some uh, layers, layers so that we may consider today. On one hand, uh, an elite, a prestige school is the one where uh, the parents take their children for prestige of uh, their study. In a way, the changes in the legislation removed uh, uh, a huge uh, waiting list uh, or uh, fires or fights uh, when uh, they introduced uh, the changes into the law of the Russian Federation on uh, the registration where children had to go uh, to to school only. Исходя из таких посылов, мы решили и поговорить из этих вопросов, поговорить на тему элитных школ и как в разрезе качества образования, в разрезе общественного восприятия, в разрезе тех результатов, которые дает, и вообще имеет ли смысл поддерживать вот а, такой подобный статус. Представлять спикеров не буду или стоит? Хорошо. Так, тогда просто э, по очереди. Павел Зинкович, первый заместитель министра просвещения. Павел Зинкович, the first deputy of minister of education of Russia. Uh, then uh, we have minister of the government of Moscow and head of department of education uh, and science in Moscow. Uh, Павел, Павел Зинкович. Uh, Oleg uh, Mosalov, Head of Department of Education, Science and Youth Policy of Voronezh. Yeah, have I uh, left, left out something? Yeah, same in Voronezh area. Voronezh Oblast, uh, Dmitry um, Klimishin, Vice President of General Director of uh, Prosvishenia Enlightenment uh, Publishing House. And uh, we have experts here. In the, in the room. So again, Michael Sluch, director of the uh, school number 57 in Moscow, Anna Vakhneyeva, director of uh, uh, school number 1517 in Moscow, Dmitry Fishbein, uh, uh, director of uh, the uh, school under the uh, high economic school, and Letova school director, My Michael Mokrinsky, and uh, uh, Anton Molev, uh, uh, scientific uh, 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 director of uh, Ranepa uh, 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 School. So, what's what's the role that you would like to to uh, to use? What's the hat you'd like to wear today? You were asking uh, for the yeah, considering your tight agenda. So, the floor goes to you. Mm -hmm. First, I need to tell yeah, how the way I was invited, how I was invited to, to the session today. Vladimir Alexandrovich called me and said, we invite directors of elite school uh, schools as experts. They will need uh, to argue with someone. You know, uh, we need someone for them to argue with. So you, you, you must come. It's a must. You have to come and say a word against elite schools. And, uh, you know, I... As time goes by, I try to uh, uh, not to argue with people. I usually try to advocate things. I'm speaking for uh, in favor of alternatives, and that's why my speech, my presentation. I would like to uh, to to call uh, with a with a to, to to name my presentation with a question: Can an elite school be uh, a mass targeted uh, school? I'll try. Uh, not to give the directors uh, a possibility to criticize me. So uh, 
Yes, I'll try to speak less and show more so that you would have a chance to criticize my presentation. Uh, so. Uh, 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 so we, if we use the principle, yeah, when you are absent, uh, they they bad mouth you. Well, when I'm absent, you can even beat me. Um, so let me sh show the slides. Uh, so I would like uh, to uh, come to terms about some uh, some definitions that we are going to use uh, in my presentation. Yeah, I like uh, this uh, this year frame of a dictionary so i refer to to the items in that dictionary next slide colleagues this this is uh, the, the the quote that that um uh, the, it was said actually four years ago that's exactly what we heard four years ago this is the most important signal in our activity most important uh, 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 motto, slogan, and uh, that's what our mayor said some two years ago. He was talking about the past on one hand, and he was talking about the things uh, that existed at that time, and about the purposes and targets, uh, things to do. So in order to address the school issues, uh, so we will the, 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 a special set of tools was created, was developed. I'm not going to talk about it because uh, they're all at uh, the um, uh, public access at the school, uh, big city school, uh, properly distributed. And uh, if you're interested in the tools in the structure of uh, problem solving, they are all here at this website. And uh, what are the first uh, primary results of uh, our activity, of our exercise? It's not some kind of uh, finalizing. We are talking about the results that we are getting today, that we have got. And uh, I would like you to focus on the fourth item of this chart. And it makes me happy, even more than the first, uh, than uh, the second, though I'm happy about all of them, but I'm especially happy about the fourth line, um, because uh, there are so many talented children today, and uh, they are prepared not by 10, by 5, or by 50 schools, but 228 schools. Uh, gave us those uh, talented children. And this list is uh, is not exhaustive. It's not, it, it does not conclude on the same schools. The competition in the city is very stringent. And uh, if you want to get uh, to the Russian Olympiad from the city, so uh, three, almost 400 schools, so more than 70% of our schools participate. And this is a chart. This is a chart that's showing us when the um, uh, when we started uh, digressing, uh, uh, when we started going away from our colleagues. And uh, uh, after four years uh, of changes, we started uh, seeing the first results. Next slide. And it's not just the school contests that uh, we can measure the results with, but uh, certainly the uh, uh, the final state exams, final public exams. And look at uh, the number of our graduates uh, who get very high points, uh, like 220 points, uh, even 280 uh, points for the final exams, three final exams. Look at the look at the growth rate, and you know about the international PISA study. Uh, Moscow participated twice as a, a, an individual entity, and we uh, know that this year the results went up as well. And you can see the uh, uh, the, the place of Moscow in this international uh, study. I remind you that we all working in the public education system, we all have a very ambitious goal. By 2024, Russia should uh, join the 
should, should be within the top 10 countries of the world uh, in the uh, in the in the international research res results, international studies. In Moscow. Статуса ребенка и его семьи. В какую бы школу вы ни записали ребенка, велика вероятность того, что он получит хорошее образование, что не гарантировано в большинстве крупных городов. Спасибо и uh, unusual, yeah, it, 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 the, the sin of uh, desperation and pride, those two sins, um, they are, so we, we always have those sins, unfortunately, in uh, this uh, education system. And uh, so our goal is certainly to try to go away of those two uh, deadly sins. So the philologists will certainly forgive me for my favorite phrase that success is a noun uh, in, in the past. So as like Vys Vysotsky is saying, so it's only a moment uh, that you are on the top, but the, you, you, then you drop instantly and uh, the, the, it takes time. So and that's the problem that we managed to avoid in Moscow to get rid of that problem. Uh, we eradicated it. And uh, I hope that the directors, the school directors here will, will, will confirm what I say, that we uh, got rid of, uh, of the situation when some Moscow schools call themselves elite school or not elite school and uh, just like other school. So every school has to develop their children and their talent, no matter if it is a normal, ordinary school or a top school. So this is a problem that uh, is still pending, and it takes time to, to be eradicated. And I have a feeling that uh, very often we generate, uh, we keep generating this problem. The people uh, of the education system, the people who work in the education uh, system, what would be the conclusions that I would like to offer? They're all here. And uh, we can have a short video here. So I visit you, and you are getting uh, the, some some uh, some goods uh, that that nobody has, and you have, and you are getting those goods for me, and they are available. So if you remember the Soviet Union, this great uh, actor and this uh, uh, moment in the movie, so you know pretty well what I mean. We create this kind of deficit. We are heating. We, uh, or we are different from the uh, um, uh, from the character of this movie. So we want to answer this in this way that we are different. And one more thing. Then, then my proposal that I suggest for your discussion. Again, let me remind let me remind you that that uh, that entering the top ten lines in the international studies result uh, will not help us one percent of the kids, even if this one percent will show superb results. Even that very PISA is arranged in a very smart way because it will check the knowledge of the children that. Uh, 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 our uh, ninth graders, and uh, that's everyone. So in order to achieve our goal, we must work uh, for everyone, not just for this 1% of uh, talented children. And let me again uh, digress slightly from the presentation. Should we look at the history? 
at the background, especially uh, at the last years, there are so many discoveries, inventions that we gave to the world but never materialized, never used here in Russia. Because this very little percentage of uh, the talented inventors that we have and this large uh, percentage, large share of people who uh, then uh, carry out those inventions, those great ideas, uh, the, the ideas, uh, they are far away. And this gap between this 1% and the a general population of people, I believe, is dangerous, not uh, with the PISA uh, failure, but the failure in uh, uh, economics. So, again, let me go back to the big city school, not to waste too much time. Um, this side contains the description of all the tools in detail, the tools that we use uh, to carry out the uh, concept that I highlighted. And uh, there's one wish. It's not mine. That's I'm quoting. Now, I stole this, uh, this uh, uh, phrase uh, from a smart person from a prominent guy. If you want to over uh, to pass your competitors, you have to select the most difficult path if you want to overtake your competitors to win the race. So once my, the mic is mine, the floor is mine, I'll tell you, don't waste time. So this is the, uh, 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 the website and remember, it contains all the answers to the questions that you might have after my presentation. So you will find all the answers there. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm done. Yeah, can I can I please clarify? It's not a question. It's just to 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 to, to specify slightly. A couple of years ago, in the education fair that Moscow uh, conducts. Uh, annually, you said that the scope of the changes in the Moscow education system only matches the uh, the huge scope of Moscow itself. And if uh, in Russia we can find an agglomeration like Moscow, a mega city, then it can borrow the experience uh, that Moscow has been through and implement. Otherwise, uh, if you just try to take and copy, it won't work. Honestly, I, uh, I'm against copying. Uh, that's another quote from a famous movie. This is just food for thought, food for thought. Uh, this is just for that. It was not two, it was three years ago. I was uh, speaking about it and uh, I, at that time, I didn't have experience of uh, the rural areas, uh, territories, and schools um, uh, merged with Moscow, joined, who joined Moscow. And now we have uh, such experience. And I discovered, to my surprise, that the mechanism that used to work in Moscow uh, turned out uh, quite uh, uh, successful and uh, practical in rural areas that joined Moscow as new Moscow. Thank you very much. Uh, so, dear colleagues, when we talk about uh, scale and applicable mechanism, and I think uh, Isaac will support me, we don't talk about absolute numbers, but rather about approaches and tools that can be applied to develop the system. From this point of view, it's very Im so the reason for asking this question on how this experience can be applicable because after a number of years uh, it was interesting to listen about uh, what happened to the territories which uh, merged into Moscow, Oleg. Uh, I would like to ask you to continue the topic. Are you equally sure that 
such experience of uh, Moscow can be applied. And Isaac, uh, I'm sorry to clarify, are all your schools elite schools now, or are they all just good schools? Those who survived the catastrophe is optimistic now. A quotation from a Russian poet. Our schools are optimistic. Oleg, are you ready to develop optimistic schools? Well, for sure, we have uh, uh, in your region, uh, not only in Voronezh, the regional center, there are schools all parents would like their children to go, which are considered as elite schools. Well, to begin with, I would not like to have a discussion about the rural uh, New Moscow schools. But actually, uh, the situation with the rural schools is a little bit different. And first of all, the experience Moscow has, and let's avoid using the term experience, uh, well, in the sense of copying. So we cannot just transfer Moscow experience to another place. However, the system developed in Moscow and the real practice um, is something uh, which can really be used um, in other places. And in terms of terminology, it was uh, correct that we began with the definition. What's an elite school? For the last 10 years, um, we were trying to create them and we were trying to avoid the concept of an elite school uh, that tries to get as, uh, as many resources as possible. Uh, we should rather focus on quality. And as a head of a regional system, an elite school um, equals to uh, better schools among good schools in terms of result. But there is a problem we have to solve and there is a level you need to aspire to in terms of numbers. 70 percent uh, uh, account 70% uh, of uh, students go to 30% of schools. And it's quite opposite with the in rural schools. And this is the situation of equal opportunities for everyone. And you need to build your policy the way that in a regional center, and I think I got your hint, Maxim, so people who consider themselves as an elite they believe that their children should go to the very same school, so then it would be an elite school, in their opinion. Or otherwise, uh, you have a, diff a slightly different uh, picture with the elite, so the demands of the elite would be quite different. And to conclude, I would like to give you an example. When you have uh, rural schools which uh, bring results, uh, in particular in our region, in Voronezh region, which attract people and people from other districts of Voronezh and other subjects of the Russian Federation's move there. And we have the multi-level education complex number two in Voronezh, uh, which is in an old residential neighborhood, uh, which is being managed for a brilliant director for 25 years, and they have a separate team of uh, students at the regional school Olympics. And uh, they are very stable in terms of uh, giving the results because they have a very uh, efficient team, a team of uh, um, teachers 
and parents and uh, t uh, ch children, of course. And I think I could give you two examples which demonstrate that we should um, just change the ratio between the good schools. So our aim is to make the rural uh, areas of Voronezh similar to those uh, which are close to Moscow in terms of uh, education quality. Okay, so as a matter of fact, one topic I would like to cover. So this is a regional and maybe even a local story. A traditional perception on the side of parents of schools uh, associated with prestige. If your kids go there and being prestigious has to do with the social and economic uh, status and if we would talk about lyceums and uh, gymnasiums which flourished in 1990s so when we were preparing a rating of the best advanced uh, schools so specialists uh, uh, in education found out that uh, physical uh, that schools uh, that major in physics and mathematics uh, in 30 schools which positioned themselves as elite schools so they had the average single um, state exam score below 60 however the uh, uh, average uh, score for regular uh, physical and mathematical schools uh, the score was still above those in schools uh, with profound learning of humanities uh, again that brings about a question of uh, who are the students it's a matter of selection uh, incoming selection and selection during learning well uh, I, I thought we wanted to share a comment with us so from that point of view not all our schools are equal and we don't give equal opportunities to all our children uh, Mikhail you had experience of working in the public uh, sector system and also in a private okay as for a private system there are no questions it should be different right because the goals and targets may be different and should be different and the selective approach uh, is justified or maybe it's a social project uh, when it shouldn't be selective so when you could take uh, school uh, 15 17 to a different level well um, so did you thought about uh, this selective approach uh, should it be in both systems well I would say that uh, this selective approach could be used in both system yeah I would like to turn my face to the audience and the panelists so every system may be selective because the first uh, speakers cover the systems where school is part of a system so director is responsible for a school as part of the system and he must realize whether uh, he wants to use the system or either contribute to the system and I don't think there is a big difference between a public and a private school uh, so that's rather the matter of how you position the school uh, having a target group a target audience is one thing but mixing uh, what can be behind uh, uh, this target audience is a different story so at the very beginning of my career as a director I came to the Department of Education of Moscow for uh, a piece of advice it was Svetlana Korovina and I asked her 
Uh, I am a director uh, for just a few years uh, in my school. If I would try just to create a school for talented children, well, she said it's a bad idea. Yeah, and uh, then I said, uh, would it be possible for me to build a school as if it's intended a school for talented people? And that's a different story. You have a target group and you have a challenge to your team. Would it be possible, given the difference in the capacity, in the potential and the skills of children, uh, will you be able to work without uh, being hung about what you know well? And then the consequences are different. Elite education, which can cater for the diversity of uh, skills and motivations of children, is a school that would solve problems the way you could um, share with others and which uh, could render this function not to the children alone, but to the entire system of education. And I believe the school I worked for for many years was built that way. And a director in every school understands that he doesn't only work with uh, ideals, but also with interests. And what are the interests which can undermine the very idea of the elite education so that you could criticize it absolutely painfully? A teacher, a professor who works in an elite school, well, quite often he has interests to fight for his labor conditions. So he can fight for his pupil, his student, and for the possibility of self-actualization in the system he arrived at as part of his academic career. And back in the 90s, it was very justified and representatives of the school said, we are successful already, so maybe we can make use of it. It's quite legal to raise uh, funds from parents. And for 10 years, there were serious complaints from the team uh, who would tell me there is no advantage uh, possible. Uh, we will only use the public uh, funds we get from the budget. And I think that the differences in development lead to the understanding of this um, elitarian nature of a school that um, makes it uh, very popular among uh, parents which want it to be a special sort of uh, social club and also among children that would like it to be a mono-task uh, school or a task having a very narrow circle of targets. So if a school would select the right way for positioning itself, then the elite based character would be the quality of education uh, on the uh, verge of the demand uh, from the audience and uh, uh, the quality of education offered. So if it is a healthy story, then a school would not just be a part of the system, but would rather be a supplier of solutions uh, which would be different and which help uh, the system to develop itself. Because the more it happens, then the more diverse is uh, um, uh, uh, the range of opportunities for development, and the more are the prospects for uh, the progress. So if I understand it correctly, the school has to look at itself, and to be honest, insane. So I, as a school, is ready to work with only one type of uh, school children, if I take them, then the result is good and I would look nice. No, it's quite the opposite. The school would say, uh, no, not the selection criteria are important, but what is important is how I can respond to unexpected requests. 
I get after uh, we take uh, uh, this child. So in that case, uh, the school is either entitled uh, for a selective approach or it begins to grow due to untrivial problems and every untrivial solution becomes a system rather than a case. Uh, because only a school which responds to new challenges can uh, develop continuously. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Anna, a question to you. Is your story the same with children's interests and the school's transformation? Yeah, hello. We are very optimistic. We have more than 7,000 uh, uh, city district school, uh, regional school in the city. And coming back to the definition and uh, saying that we want to uh, first come to terms, uh, we, I want, we want it to be good so that it would uh, respond to the requirements that we feel from the city and uh, the requirements that this, the, the country, the state has. But there are some numbers that will show that the school is sustainable and it's part of the system of the Moscow education. When uh, the school is multifaceted, we have 280 uh, prize winners of the regional uh, 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 regional Olympiads and uh, almost 200 certificates of the professions without boundaries. And these are different children. Every third uh, child in this school is a volunteer and every fourth child has the uh, special sports uh, um, awards. These are the real people, the people whom we, we have. Uh, and I would like to use your definition that your your uh, idea that the school should uh, really uh, consider uh, its own activity and get ready to new challenges of tomorrow. Uh, but a proper school, I cannot say probably we are not the biggest school, but it's not small and uh, it's flexible. It's very uh, 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 nimble because uh, the HR resource that we have, the people, the uh, technical capacity, the uh, buildings that we have, this uh, space that we have, we can be flexible uh, with it and combine and be quite sustainable. I believe that some mm, uh, uh, single department schools are less sustainable. I guess that's all. I hope I answered your question. That's what you wanted to say, but not exactly. I didn't. Um, you didn't answer my question. I did not call you to the blackboard. Look at look. Seven thousand children, students. Then how uh, can you build uh, the uh, system of uh, considering the interest of the children? Uh, yes, as for the interest of the city, of the state, of the public, that's uh, that's clear because uh, we can read it in the document and there is a, uh, a purpose setting from by the state. But how do you, how do you let, you know, the interest of the children uh, to be expressed? 7,000 people, how do you group them by their interest? We do it uh, by all possible ways and means. We position our school and we insist that we are a school that uh, is pers per per permanently in the dialogue with the family and families are free to uh, suggest, uh, to comment, to question. We have a pool of additional educational, additional courses. When we see a child, we don't tell him where to go for complementary education. The child uh, will select on his own. And uh, we perform researches, polls, studies, uh, and uh, we offer things. But you can always write and say what is missing. Every year, 
in particular in the pre-professional education, in the college education, we create a new package every year. Um, for the nine graders, uh, for them, we create a special new package in the 10th grade. And uh, it's all in the open access at the website of the school. Mm, and we uh, keep studying this question. And certainly, we have uh, options. Uh, there are uh, Olympiads, competitions. We monitor it. It's a technology uh, that, that we use. We work a lot in the virtual space. And uh, uh, and in this respect, uh, we are trying to replace uh, the paper document. Uh, and then uh, we are switching to e uh, electronic documents. So the children are not uh, getting lost in this big space, right? So they can always find something that's interesting for them individual. Thank you very much. So let us try to shift gears. Uh, Dmitry Alexandrovich, uh, what about the businesses? Uh, what? What do you find interesting to, 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 to work with from the point of, uh, of view? From, from our publisher's uh, biz, uh, business view, we certainly want to work with uh, the state schools, public schools, and uh, mass, mass schools. The, because this mass production that gives you the economy of scale and uh, savings and uh, reasonable costs. But speaking about some individual approaches, uh, like training uh, materials, uh, study the training materials, Moscow keeps ordering for Moscow School individual textbooks. Uh, in, uh, we used to supply especially PISA or uh, uh, language textbooks, uh, especially for Moscow schools. So when there is an individual request uh, from the bottom that go that's going to the top, I believe uh, that's certainly important for to to uh, to improve the education quality. And the business uh, will welcome uh, the initiative uh, targeted at uh, the results from the. So business should also. So business business uh, requires results. Otherwise, it's not business; it's something else. So any any endeavor, any initiative on uh, publishing some new things uh, is always welcome. We always welcome those challenges. So that's from the business point of view. But looking at some individual solutions for some uh, 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 restricted group of people. So then the cost goes up. And uh, we, I would say, we can speak about uh, uh, new solutions that we can put into production, introduce into production. So we are permanently searching for some individual approaches uh, then uh, to, uh, uh, to disseminate them, to copy. Uh, in your experience, to what extent such uh, individual approaches uh, so how how successfully can you scale those individual uh, requirements? We try to process any requirement and then test and see uh, make a pile and see uh, what it uh, comes to, because there are unique individual developments uh, that will never become the developments of scale. But uh, even uh, in on small scales, they're giving you good results. Uh, speaking about the uh, textbooks, textbooks will never give uh, results by itself, because you need a professional teacher who will be able to use this textbook. And that's why it uh, it's a um, uh, two-way road. We need feedback from those who uses our product, for uh, who use our products. And uh, so, once uh, we never had new development, new textbooks, uh, we would have never changed uh, and developed new textbooks, and new materials wouldn't go to schools. It happens quite uh, frequently, and uh, uh, for the educational system, as uh, we can, uh, you, you cannot. Uh, 
if, if you educate people, you don't have immediate results. Uh, sometimes you need years and sometimes decades to appreciate the results of the educational changes. So it's a it's not an easy task. Uh, there are always innovations, new textbooks, new ideas, and we shall keep working with it. Coming back to schools. Michael Ilyich, your school is a little one, uh, um, yeah, to Moscow standards, right? Yes, it's not big by Moscow standards. So, uh, we, yeah, you think about uh, 2,000 children in a small, small region. Yes, in fact, that's how it happens. That's true in this respect. 2,000 students, uh, a mid-sized school, we understand that 2,000 children are getting the same conditions for uh, training as uh, 2,000 in a municipal, uh, in a part of a city is a different uh, uh, ball game. So as a, a small school, 2,000 students in Moscow, only 2,000 kids, you, do you consider yourself a top-notch, an elite school, high class, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, requirement? The so Isakov is just uh, said that he was summoned here to discuss, uh, well, so I also spoke uh, with Vladimir Alexandrovich approximately two days ago, and I was coming here without clear understanding that you are going to call me, what you are going to call my school, elite or not elite. It's a, a difficult question. Yeah. Yes, I had a school where parents are uh, interested uh, and that enjoys demand from the parents. and. Uh, and this is a good case. Uh, so we try to understand how the situation looks from inside. It's clear that it's a math problem. It's not the life sciences. It's, it's not the humanitarian sciences. But the system is uh, diverse, is very diverse. It cannot have a mean, same temperature, same and in the education system, it, it cannot be the same everywhere. A director, a school director, is not a head of regional or federal education system. You certainly want the best for your school. Every director is trying to make his school successful and develop it faster and stronger. And uh, I didn't like uh, the name elite schools in this panel. I understand it's difficult to find synonyms, but you can try. And uh, another Western word, it's egalitarian. We hate to put everyone at some strange level, plus four, like the water in the uh, ocean. In uh, So what can the system do to, to revert, to change the situation? And uh, I would name competition as the first primary factor. I cannot imagine how we can eradicate this problem, uh, maybe in the situation where some regions don't have this competition. I'm happy that competition exists, and Michael Gennadievich spoke about it. There were those times when there were few schools, like only one school in the Northwest. Now we can feel that competition. Uh, and it's very tang tangible, it's stringent. And in particular, we had it on the slide uh, about the 220 schools uh, with those uh, 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 scientific contests winners. Uh, and another important moment is that this elite nature can be considered from different angles. Uh, there are schools uh, that uh, you know, are, are, are basking in money, pouring, you know, money money is pouring, parents' money, state money, whatever. Uh, there is inflow of money. And probably there is a, 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 a taste of elite uh, uh, life. And, uh, and, uh, and sometimes uh, there are schools, uh, well, that feel like torture, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, this, I would like to 
um, remind of Mr. Ovchinnikov, director of the second school uh, Lyceum. So the the school, uh, the school is a place where people teach and are being taught. So it's like a it's uh, like like a not not a torture, but but uh, it's difficult. Uh, children feel overworked, but they go for it. They go for it, and uh, it, it feels like forced labor. But if you look at it, uh, uh, well, uh, from another angle, children want it, and it's positive. Children are happy to go through this uh, labor. They toil in that school, and the school is trying to create an environment a place where children want to study, want to acquire new knowledge. And uh, now even it's not the money that we feel dearth of. It's the teachers who are lacking, who are missing. We don't have enough teachers. This is a hard story. And uh, teachers who can uh, incentivize the kids to study. And if a school can find a critical mass of such good teachers. We were discussing, for instance, the uh, he, uh, background of the well, story of teachers in Russia. And uh, if a school can find a good team, uh, teachers who are ready to contribute uh, uh, and uh, kind of uh, give their heart and soul to talented children. Uh, and now the uh, idea of an elite school is different uh, than uh, it was uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago when I finished my school number 57. Now um, a child is not a property of the school and the children develop in the system, not exactly the school or, or 57 or 15, 35. Uh, the, those smart, talented children, strong children, we understand our contribution. It's only 3% in their development. It's both the family and some people like uh, mentors in the city at the level of the, the, the city who uh, incentivize them and many other factors that help them to study. Competition at the forced labor site. Yeah, sounds, yes. So, it gives us a new vision of the school processes. Uh, many years ago, in Kaluga area, director of one of the schools, one of the schools said that a good school is indeed, well, well he said, if you want your child to get all the possible international contests and good grades and bring it, to us, but we shall break him. We shall break his psychology and interest, but he will be the best in terms of grades and points. Is it forced labor or not? Is it worth it? So speaking about hard, forced labor, toiling and the results. Dmitry Efimovich, Antonovich, you are representatives of higher education. Schools under universities, schools within universities. So from this point of view, you need to be, uh, to have elite nature. It's not just you are uh, preparing your training, teaching children uh, because you have to. You really need to prepare the uh, children to prepare the students for universities, for specific universities, targeted universities. Mm, okay, look, I would not uh, differentiate uh, our schools uh, from the general purpose uh, secondary schools. Um, so I think I was invited to argue, and I will try to. I think it's not about being an elite school, but about diversity. We have uh, demands of among children and parents in a big city, which are uh, so diverse that I think we need different types of schools, and I think we are very different from what Mr. Leto for Leonid and other schools have. We shouldn't discuss uh, who is better. 
but we should rather ask ourselves what concept, uh, what school concept uh, matches the interests of uh, children and their parents best. So that's a question of the need for different schools uh, for different purposes. Uh, then uh, the headmaster, the director, should think uh, about a unique uh, nature of his school. So this uh, way is a little bit different, different from what uh, Mr. Kalina was talking about. So this is my first uh, uh, idea. Secondly, the social environment is a very important uh, component. The company of people around you, or like your team, it depends on the social background of children and parents. And my connotation here is positive. The way it's being created, I don't think it's up to us to regulate it. So this is something about environment and the school's concept. And I believe that this is an important component because uh, children with graduate the school with from the school with the social uh, networks uh, with uh, important connections uh, okay number three is uh, the selective approach I believe that at the moment our methodology for selecting uh, students uh, which are admitted to the Lyceum or the High School of Economic is not the best. If we would have the opportunity to uh, take all uh, the children, we would probably uh, do this. And that's about the material conditions and uh, uh, training for the Lyceum curriculum. Uh, without payment. So I don't think that the intellectual uh, way of selecting is the best possible. If we would figure out how we could talk with 6,000 people and realize if our, our concepts and goals are the same. So this is not about uh, trying to select uh, the best of the best, uh, but we would like to rather like to invite uh, those who are like-minded and of course I'm talking about uh, the senior grades uh, which is of course different with the elementary schools uh, I would like to talk about the uh, synergy and I would think on the diversity of our environment and it would be ideal if uh, all sort of people would find uh, what matches their interests in this uh, very complex life we have. Okay, it's my turn now, and I'm happy to welcome you all. So, um, uh, I would like to continue this discussion about alternative options, about Lyceum uh, of the Higher School of Economics and uh, the one of uh, René Aparam. But I would just like to share ideas with the audience. And if we would like it, this provocative title, will the bubble of lead to schools pop? This is no provocation, or this is rather a double provocation, because uh, the authors of the questions invite us to have a discussion. But uh, if we answer, in either negative or positive way, then we probably ad, uh, admit uh, the, the, this dilemma. So then it's not a provocation. That depends on the concept of the word elite. I think we are all uh, unanimous about our perception of the word. Uh, and my second comment is also linguistic. Uh, we should think about the etymological roots of the word elite. So, as it was mentioned, so it is quite often connected to prestige, but the eth 
etymology of both words is different because uh, prestige is about uh, cheating etymologically but uh, an elite or an, an elite status uh, is about choice uh, from the point of view of uh, the word origination and in that sense the elite nature is very much defined by the choice of the parents and I would also like to comment on what's going on in the region so the Lyceum of Freneper is an environment uh, where parents and their children have choice and that also includes uh, um, 13 more uh, schools and in other lyceums we have uh, uh, students from the region so that's the matter of choice uh, by parents so we have a city project from uh, 2012 and it allows us uh, to give a good answer to equal opportunities but schools are very different uh, because uh, Moscow is huge as a city and all these differences uh, should be very much in line with the opportunities of the schools and uh, the uh, capabilities of children and uh, the ministry is school have different selection criteria so uh, of course they all want uh, um, special talented children and uh, we are envious about other schools that have uh, good children as well but uh, the selection criteria our colleagues from the higher schools of economic uh, try to find so there is a system of identifying uh, friends and enemies. Are you sure? Uh, I'm asking parents here. Uh, so, um, Michal mentioned the term forced labor, but in the same rooms where the rector would welcome um, parents and children, he said, uh, I wish you a hard work in your studies. This is the only way to arrive to the result uh, you need. So, are you sure this is your choice? Are you sure this is the place for you? Then selection and invitation for a dialogue would be the main uh, principle. So, in a mega city like Moscow, the education system, um, well, should have uh, options in the way it can develop. Thank you very much. Uh, Oleg, going back to what you said, uh, Voronish. So, uh, I would like to ask you, if higher schools in Voronish have uh, uh, high schools attached to them? And no. And is it possible if uh, Voronish State University would uh, open the so-called uh, pre university or pre-universarium i think uh, there will be a big line uh, queuing for that no i don't think that these to have a big line you need to understand what uh, the distinguished Voronish state uh, university will offer uh, uh, to the students and how it will be arranged for uh, every now and then we have a discussion but I think I have to continue acting uh, here in the role of a person who represents uh, the remaining part of the country outside Moscow and I think we would like to understand that this um, progress towards the elite status and I'm trying to analyze what I heard from uh, Mr. Isaac Kalina uh, I recalled more numbers. Two years ago, we had a winner of all Russian school Olympics who was from an ordinary school, not from an elite school. And when I heard about it and I asked him, who's the teacher? The teacher was 
absolutely fabulous. So he had, uh, he waste uh, some winners, but uh, he wasn't, uh, his personality wasn't that uh, obvious uh, on that uh, summit of uh, School Olympics winners. And the second case, uh, at the regional level, if we would take the number of winners from the rural municipal areas, so they are equal compared to the city population, to the urban population. So this is the result we should work for. So if we use that term, elite, mm, we should also think about being available for uh, as many people as possible. If we would have a pre-universarium for the State University or the Polytechnic University of Voronezh, so this would be offering students uh, equal opportunities. But uh, we need availability and we shouldn't forget about schools which do not compete and it's not possible uh, to talk about uh, competition between schools at different municipalities. Now, I fully agree with my colleagues that uh, a school uh, child do not belong to the school any longer. So, and opportunities for every kid are quite different. So this elite approach uh, should mm, rather be at the level of every kid, not at the level of uh, a school. Uh, uh, Pavel, uh, could you please summarize the both parts uh, of the education? Okay, I come last uh, at this round table. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate our organizers who invented uh, a title for the panel which is so provocative. So part of the interest towards the panel was this uh, provocative nation. And I believe you wanted uh, someone to criticize others. Uh, the previous speakers uh, were so delicate, but allow me to criticize you. Introducing that type of terminology and uh, Anton mentioned uh, the bubble and the elite schools, but I think the discussion is uh, sort of pointless. What's uh, elite school? So we can um, give you some quotations, but uh, the education system works for the people, and we need to think about the perception of the word elite. I think, as a person uh, who uh, has not spent his entire life in education. So I have some administrative experience, but I try to have a look from the point of view of a parent. So an elite school means a prestigious school, a school that attracted a lot of uh, public and uh, private funds uh, with five meals a day, with a marble uh, in the pool. So, another schools uh, should boast a unique team of uh, teachers uh, offering high quality of education, offering um, advanced uh, curricula uh, with children demonstrating uh, good results. Um, what's important for the parents, the future of their children, if they are able to and be admitted to the best um, higher schools. So, I believe we are talking about a school where a child would get a high quality education, where a child would be involved in a big amount of extracurricular activities, being a volunteer or uh, taking part in sports competitions where teachers would spend a lot, um, a lot of uh, times and efforts on uh, behavior. When, uh, when school children are 
uh, among the certain social areas. So my elder daughter is still a blogger and she keeps saying that the school uh, was where I spent the best uh, years of my life and I was staying at school till uh, 9 p.m. because it was exciting, there were a lot of uh, events. So we shouldn't call them elite schools, but we should find a different term because we are talking about something different. If we would talk about that type of schools, they could be divided into two categories nowadays. There are schools, traditional schools, which uh, exist for dozens of years, so, and where a director would be a school graduate. So this is not a question about a bubble popping, uh, about any threat to such schools, because they are traditional. And even competition uh, being shaped, and this story is quite correct, and I fully support Isaac uh, Kalina, uh, the situation when a kid uh, doesn't belong to a school and he needs to work on himself. So, and I think the number of such schools is growing. And even in Moscow, mm, we had uh, the highest number of uh, winners of the school Olympics. Uh, of course, no one has uh, enough for equity or uh, a lever to control it. Okay, so going back to the elite schools uh, and wondering if the bubble can pop. Um, there are schools with a reputation. There are some new schools which opened just a few years ago. And again, we are confident that uh, schools attached to the ministries are backed by the higher school of economic and other higher schools. There are some schools which opened recently. And as a ministry, as a regulator, uh, so we need, uh, uh, and colleagues from the region, we need to watch them uh, closely as uh, they're innovative. Uh, and uh, we make sure, we should make sure that we, um, uh, that the, the this uh, pilot project uh, does not fail. The problem of uh, the secondary education is that something you, you cannot unmince the meat. If uh, a test, an experiment has failed, we cannot give uh, a, a child uh, another education. Probably something, for instance, if uh, he's a bachelor, a bachelor in in the in the university, he uh, if something goes wrong, he can still change, but not at school. That's why, as a ministry, we are being over cautious. Uh, we certainly advocate innovations and new methodologies, but but you need to think twice because the price of an error is uh, uh, disastrous here if something goes wrong with our pilot innovations. We need to watch such new schools, uh, but we cannot say that it's a bubble. We, we certainly, it's not a bubble. In any education system, uh, both in this country, at all times, we used to have schools uh, that I will remove the word elite. Uh, we had schools with higher results in certain areas, and uh, I believe it's not so much as fine. It's not so much the financing, uh, but the good, um, unique pedagogical uh, team, the teachers' team, and uh, schools like that. Uh, uh, are flagships, and the system needs them. And what was the business colleague that told us? It, the, probably these such schools are not as interesting for business as a market of uh, textbooks. But these are schools where we test the methodologies, new practices, maybe out of the, the solutions, unique solutions that we can just copy to the whole system, make them out of the box solutions. We shall certainly not be able to make all 40,000 schools of Moscow like uh, the, the pre-university or uh, School 57, but we can certainly use and borrow some technologies from them. And uh, we should consider the uh, experience uh, or uh, process of new educational standards. Uh, we have included several items that allow the schools to have more freedom and uh, you are a member of the um, council, so they certainly should uh, uh, have uh, structured content. But for schools like that, we especially uh, give a leeway, so a freedom to uh, 
uh, to continue uh, be creative, to continue being creative. And in this respect, again, coming back uh, to what we started, uh, criticizing the organizers, we thank you for this uh, header. And uh, this header is a, you know, is a, is a mind uh, 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 boggling one. Uh, is a, yeah, is an icebreaker. We needed to change the terminology um, uh, because this elite or balloon or the bubble, the, 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 the words don't sound good. And again, once I. Uh, decide to criticize you. So here with me and Isaac Osevich uh, attending, speaking about the selective nature, we have Constitution Article 63. Actually, my hand uh, was, um, uh, was was going for the gun, you know, but, but uh, I understand that this is your provo provocative way. I uh, support my colleagues absolutely uh, because when you start, uh, you know, uh, trying to do this uh, the segregation, you 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 sign, uh, you know, helplessness. Uh, so it's not by chance. Isaac Osevich gave us gave us uh, the presidential address. All children are talented, and speaking about those elite schools in a good sense of this word, so their unique uh, teachers and methodologists allow children to tap their potential, to, to realize their potential, not just uh, gather, you know, children who would be uh, giving them better results, but it's uh, the top of uh, ped pedagogical mastery and the work of the whole uh, team and the system that we are trying to develop. We need to provide opportunity, uh, a chance for each ta child to develop. And uh, we hope those elite school will not pop, pop. We just hope that they will try new methodologies and then uh, uh, then they will share those methodologies uh, to other schools uh, in order to address the goal in the, that in the presidential address and become one of the top 10 in international studies. So I thank you very much. I turn to the audience. Who wants to ask a question or make a comment? One, two, three. May we have microphone to that row? Hello, good afternoon. My name is Irina Muraviova. I support one of the speakers from the point of view of the um, regions attending this. I have two children. I have uh, experience in handling children, working with schools, with teachers, uh, children, directors. I want to tell one thing that uh, today we heard in the very beginning about competition that exists between Moscow and non-Moscow. Moscow and other, so Moscow probably, uh, 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 and uh, some schools in the large cities. And uh, we compete. We don't always compete uh, through honest means. Uh, so indeed, the children are not slaves, not serfs. They select good schools. But now the best schools select the children. You know, I want to give you an example. Uh, when the schools grow children, prepare them, uh, regional schools, strong, good schools, classic, you know, conventional schools, elite, not a little confident, uh, you know, uh, that uh, ch uh, parents know. And uh, it's the eighth, ninth, ten. those children are be, uh, uh, lured by other schools in Moscow in order to raise their ratings. So the children, it's kind of a brain drain. Yeah, the, the children are not grown in some schools, but they are being uh, lured to the uh, high rating schools. We want to change the situation. We want to reverse the situation. Uh, we do want the children to go to Moscow to join elite good schools. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, because there are many reasons, more opportunities. They, we want the children to be able to select the education system, but the, but the teachers who are concentrated in the mega cities, not just. Uh, you know, we don't want that, uh, you know, childish, the, the, the brain drain of children. We are losing our children in the region. We send them here to Moscow. And uh, uh, they don't always find the good quality of education. 
uh, sometimes uh, the level of education in Moscow is not adequate, is not commensurate to the ones they were getting at local schools here. Uh, wait, 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 we, we have this lady here and then your question. Thank you very much. My name is Maria Yamskova. I am a mother too. I certainly care about the uh, uh, school education system. And within this forum, we spoke a lot about the digital economy that we need to develop innovations and things. But uh, what about the uh, uh, common exam, the final exam? Uh, does it, does it uh, match, fit the challenges? Uh, shouldn't we revise the system of education? Uh, when it's not the ready solution that we uh, offer to the kids, but, but when the kids can actively participate. I think your first part of the question and second part of the question are kind of, uh, let me break down the question. Let me move away from you <laughs> if you want to break something. Yeah. Let me start with the second part of your question. Yes. If you uh, ask... Uh, any school director, regional ministries, we all understand that uh, the key goal of the education system, both globally, not just in Russia. Uh, so because I, 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 I'm in charge of international cooperation and uh, we keep talking. So it's teaching the children learn throughout their life to be active, develop social skills, soft skills because people don't understand what's that, but everyone is talking about it. And uh, so uh, set the tasks, uh, self-education, uh, uh, get the help of the teachers, use all the modern uh, uh, innovations and the information technologies, especially for this uh, country like ours. Uh, and uh, it's exactly the communication technologies uh, that uh, we can uh, provide equal rights and uh, equal access uh, to the best knowledge, best methodology, video classes, video lessons, uh, virtual uh, sightseeing, both for children uh, of uh, Moscow, St. Petersburg, large cities, as well as for rural kids. Kids in the rural areas, they can get access to everything through communication technologies. It's a separate discussion. Uh, uh, and uh, we may may we may arrange it probably at the next forum and speak about it. It's it's, it's a separate story. Digital uh, technologies in education. As for the uh, SAT SAT exam, uh, for uh, as far as I know, yeah, are you are you a student of are you a student of Ranepa? Yes, great. Uh, if we <clears throat> just walk the corridors of uh, these buildings here well we shall see the volunteers and the students and any any university of moscow any high school of moscow we shall find a huge number of students who are grateful to this uh, set because they didn't they otherwise they wouldn't have an opportunity they wouldn't have had an opportunity to enter a university they, those were the times when uh, we introduced sat with uh, some deficiencies uh, but uh, still many children are so grateful to SAT because they would never be able to leave their remote areas to come to Moscow to study. First, SAT is not a Russian invention. It's global uh, 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 test. It's equal opportunities. It's fighting corruption. Yes, uh, it took, uh, uh, it, it went state by state. Now, certainly, it's like a military operation with the, the, the thorough search. And, but over the last three years, uh, the number of violations has reduced drastically. Sergei Kravtsov uh, is going to involve artificial intellect so that the um, uh, students doesn't, don't cheat at set. And now that the children are living anywhere from uh, east to west, they have a chance to pass those set tests and uh, enter any university of the country. That's great achievement. Saying that SAT is ideal as a as a as a, a structure as a f certainly we cannot do it uh, when uh, at the time of introduction probably there were too many tests or maybe some some 
strange things, but the set itself is good. Yeah, I'm not going to speak for the surveillance uh, agencies uh, and uh, uh, monitoring, but before set, any future um, applicant living in Kamchatka could probably uh, pass four to five exams at school, then he would need to, to uh, raise some money for for air ticket to for uh, 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 living for food in Moscow, so that he would come and pass four exams. If he fails, he would have to fly back. This is it fair? Is it fair? Is it equal uh, uh, accessibility for Moscovites and for the Far East people, for instance, as a, as an official and as a citizen? You know, I remind you about the presidential address. Our society should be fair. And this sad example uh, 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 made uh, talented children equal, no matter where they live, from Kaliningrad to Kamchatka. Uh, so this is a fact. and. Uh, uh, for that, you can forgive any temporary uh, bugs in that set. Uh, yes, uh, Americans were have been polishing their set system for, for decades, and they're, they're still unhappy. And we only introduced it 10 years ago, and you want it to be ideal. But we managed to create a system that really gives us positive effect. I would uh, not, uh, you know, be unhappy with this set test for a school. Uh, for those uh, children who finish school. Mm, I would like to specify uh, with Oleg, how do you collaborate with universities? Uh, is it um, full-time or maybe part-time? Or how do you develop the profile from ninth to 11th grade? And how can you retain your golden you know, uh, uh, treasure, your employees, your children? It's simple. It's not us who should collaborate with the universities. So, so I, I get tense uh, about the term collaborate with universities. We need to, to cooperate with the child. That's what we mean about a professional uh, education or building a career uh, and uh, selecting the profession for a child. That's what should make sense. We used to try to arrange a system where every university will uh, prepare children for entering this university but the history is showing that it would it would be wrong and uh, now uh, this uh, sat uh, this, this exact test uh, 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 let's us uh, work with the child, with the student, without building, you know, some specific uh, qualifications uh, for a specific university. And secondly, uh, is what we discussed yesterday, what the president said yesterday. The main goal is to develop uh, the regional universities. This uh, is the, uh, the the key idea that we heard, and I believe uh, uh, the. We may feel the results soon and in long term. You know, uh, it's not that the future graduate of that university will just stay to work uh, locally. He will only stay if he gets a uh, uh, decent uh, remuneration, proper salary, good social package, uh, and uh, opportunity for development of himself, of the family, of the children. It's not uh, just uh, the goal of the education system. By default, it's first the education system and then the whole country. Then it will work. And it works. It started working. But it will work uh, uh, at full scale when we all work together and try to carry out things that became relevant 10 years ago. I would probably add, um, I, I beg your pardon, yeah. should we look at the tools and the instruments we have created now? Yesterday, President mentioned the target uh, uh, education, the majoring in certain subjects uh, and those uh, 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 pr uh, pre-university schools. So. Uh, it's not the education system, but it's the proper management at the uh, constituent units level. When I was taught that the Ministry of Education is Ministry of Childhood. Ministry of Education is uh, the one that uh, is in charge of uh, the labor market. Any young person who got a certificate of a prestigious university will go to the place where the salary is higher, the living conditions are better, where there is social infrastructure, where there is a chance to create a family and raise children. And it's not only up to us, the education ministry. And uh, even this kind of uh, target education 
education when, uh, for instance, uh, your uh, uh, student uh, enters the Moscow State University, but then you find ways to, to get him back, to lure, to bait him back and he will return and work with you. This is exactly what the regions should do. And our colleagues from the higher education ministry will uh, provide quotas for uh, target for special education, target education. Uh, uh, we have canceled some quotas uh, because it was a wrong tool, but the target education um, uh, will be a good tool, but most important that it should be used. So, uh, so as for the opportunity, we have a wide range of tools, a toolkit. Okay. Mm, I see a gentleman over there at the top, uh, Roman Nazarev, a teacher of Moscow School Inclusive Education Center South. And as a teacher, I can tell you that uh, Assign geography assignments, uh, which are part of the um, single state exam system, are quite creative. And my question is that we have a special group of kids which are um, ha have no access to elite schools uh, with some disorders like autism or uh, cerebral palsy, and uh, the education of that level is not accessible to them. So. Uh, a ch child can have uh, fantastic uh, successes in maths, uh, but uh, huge problems uh, with Russian. So he can evolve into a fantastic programmer, but he will never pass uh, the exam in Russian. So what uh, could be the path uh, to such children? Um, could there be a special approach uh, uh, at the level of the early schools? Uh, thank you. Okay. I don't think I can fully answer your question because I think there are two components. You could talk about uh, children with uh, uh, disabilities. This is one story, and we do a lot with our colleagues from the Ministry of Education, like accessible environment uh, for elementary school. In high school, so for secondary school, there are programs being developed. So they are special children, children with uh, disabilities and impairment, health impairments. Uh, I, I regret my colleague, who is a professional defectologist, is not so with us. Uh, she could comment on that professionally. If you are talking about children that are have are genial in some areas, but are reluctant to study are the subject, of course, and we can give you some examples of Nobel Prize winners which were uh, doing poorly in some subjects. Well, I think this is not a question you should ask to managers, to ministers, to school directors, but rather to uh, teachers and in Soviet times we had a unique uh, system of working with uh, talented uh, kids like talented in maths but without a good knowledge of Russian so but this is a very, very narrow a very special category of uh, children I think um, it can be a good question for a discussion but to get a competent professional answer we need more support from our colleagues who are teachers from the Russian Academy of Sciences so I think I answered your question in terms of health impairments but I think it's a good idea to invite that type of expert to the next Gaidar uh, Economic Forum well actually uh, there will be a number of seminars organized later in the year, and this is a good topic for a workshop, but uh, maybe not too much suitable for Q&A session. So, okay, the last question. No, no, someone raised uh, uh, a hand uh, below. Yeah, please uh, pass the microphone. Um, 
Good evening and thank you. And so, could you please introduce yourself? I would like to point out some aspects. So, I am Helena Petrushna. I represent parents here. I represent uh, an ordinary Moscow school, number 1568 Marino District, which is among top 100. And I would like uh, to pay your attention to one aspect. Uh, President Putin uh, mentioned yesterday during his uh, his annual message. And uh, my proposal from children and parents would be, and we have uh, um, Moscow's minister, Mr. Kalina, and representatives of the federal ministry. So I would like to tell that we, in education, we really lack an aspect uh, of conditions children have when we th they are educated. Uh, we need healthy food. And remembering yesterday's uh, message of the president, I would like to request you uh, to create conditions in Moscow, as I'm a mother and my uh, kid lives in Moscow, but uh, also taking care about all children in Russia, so they should have access to fresh meals. It should be available to everyone because, sadly, it's not available to all kids of Moscow at the moment. Thank you. I'm more than sure. So this topic has been raised a number of times and we had experiments throughout the country. And it was reflected in the presidential uh, message. So, of course, there will be a solution no doubt about that. Thanks for your question. So I feel your pain. So this is a question about uh, meals. And uh, Tatiana uh, knows it well. And we uh, spoke to her. So the uh, quality of food is very different. And uh, well, we are all focused on that. We had a draft uh, law. And yesterday the president uh, commented on it and our aim is to provide uh, hot and fresh meals to all kids uh, from the first to the fourth grade for free and I think what president meant yesterday uh, is that we don't have a problem with assisting uh, the subjects of the Federation with money. The problem is with the infrastructure. We will assign money, but there are no conditions for cooking and even uh, warming up the food. Um, so our target is 2023. So and we work together with the Rospotrepnadzor, so the supervisory agency for consumers market and we understand what schools uh, would be added to the program I believe that in Moscow schools always had conditions and I think uh, mr. Kalina um, solved the problem a long time ago but the uh, federal budget will assign dozens of billions till uh, 2023 2024 but at the moment we are limited in the regions of Russia, limited by infrastructure. So that's there are problems with food delivery, especially in rural areas. Yeah, may I clarify on that? So the question is not about the food being uh, free or for payment. So in every elementary school, uh, one time meals are available for free long time ago yeah but there are different approaches on where it should be cooked should it be cooked at the canteen or maybe it could be um, 
cooked somewhere at the factory, but believe me, when you try to uh, organize, uh, we have four million diets per day. So the topic of food safety will become first the priority over all other aspects. So because industrially produced food is much safer compared to everything other. But we will try that in all kindergartens uh, we will keep the kitchens well but when you have four million diets uh, a day this is a serious number the colleagues uh, thank you very much just to summarize in a couple of words as a matter of fact uh, what I like most is that all speakers tried to avoid uh, the word elite and they tried to replace it and uh, Pavel, you are quite correct uh, that we need to change perception of the terminology. So the key point for me was diversity for everyone and creating conditions for every family and every kid, the conditions to select the school where he or she can get uh, uh, as much opportunities as possible. Then our statistical parameters of uh, um, school successfulness will grow. So what I expected, I expected that someone would say, don't mix up the early schools, and we would like every school to be an early school, and don't uh, um, mix it up with the, uh, like, uh, schools uh, for the right people well and also optimistic as it was mentioned thank you